A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Way come back to another video. The merch design used in this video, as well as handcrafted products, can be found over in my new shop, Stemmerich.eu. Link in the description. Check it out. Thank you very much. So, recently I was looking through my old university notes because I wanted to take a look at something regarding springs from theoretical physics. Never mind that. I stumbled across my old Anal 1 for. IT boys notes, I was lecturing them back in the days, tutoring them and there they had some exercises on factoring polynomials and there I found one of the first quadric polynomials I ever saw, found its root to, namely x to the fourth power plus 4x minus 1. And yeah, I thought it might be a fun exercise to also solve this here on the channel today and I hope you are going to enjoy the video and now we are going to dive right in. So, it's a quadric polynomial. It's going to allow for four roots overall. They are not bound to be uh, real roots. They can also be uh, all, all complex, for example, or maybe all real. Or maybe some roots, um, no, all roots do exist, definitely, because by Abel Ruffini, if you get a polynomial over a field C or R, you are definitely going to get four roots out on the other side. Be it real or complex, depends on the field that you got. If it's 50 degree, you can express all the roots um, with respect to radicals, for example, but on 4th degree you can. Thanks, Aberofini. Very cool. So, we are going to start to factor this boy right here, and it actually involves some very nice um, rewriting of the original polynomial that we got here. So, at first, I want you guys to notice that x to the 4th power is nothing other than x squared but to the second power. Let us rewrite it like this. It's going to become important in just a minute. Now, if you got a term which is squared, this screams for completing the square in some way. And this is what we are going to do. Let's ignore this part for now and let's focus on completing the square on x squared squared. Now what is still missing here? I mean we got the first part of the binomial theorem. If you got the binomial theorem x plus y squared, this is going to give you x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. So we got our squared term right here already, um, but what's still missing is the 2x times y part. Our x in our case is x squared, so we need something 2x squared times y and also y squared. So the y squared could be, for example, just 1, because 1 squared is nothing other than 1. It's an Eden potent. That's a very cool property. So maybe we could add and subtract 1 to this whole thing, adding a 0 overall to not change anything on our original equation. Meaning this right here is equivalent to saying we got x squared squared. And now we are going to add a 1. And we're going to subtract it right away. I'm going to leave a bit of space. And then plus 4x minus 1 is equal to 0. Now, here's still a part missing for us to complete the square. Namely, what I just said with binomial theorem is that we need something of the form 2 times, and in our case, x squared times y. But our y in our case is nothing other than 1. Meaning, 2 times x squared times y is going to be just 2 times x squared. We're going to add and subtract this term once again, and then we are basically done completing the square on our first term, namely x squared squared. <laughs> x squared squared, this is weird. Namely, we are going to add 2 x squared and we are going to subtract it right again to not change anything on our equation. And now we can start factoring this big. But the thing is, with the binomial theorem, we got two ways to factor this. On the one hand, we can factor this into something of the form x minus y squared or x plus y squared. We got both options here at hand because we got our middle part being negative 2x squared or positive 2x squared. We're going to see which one feeds our needs, meets our needs better, meets our needs, not feeds our needs. We don't want to feed our needs. Now, let us factor it. So let us go ahead and get started with the first version. So what we need in each and every case is this part for completing the square. Then at the very end we definitely need a positive one. And now we are going to start off with the positive branch, namely plus 2x squared. Giving us overall that the first way to factor our polynomial is x squared plus 1 the whole thing squared. And what is still left is, okay, so we got negative 2x squared what we also got left is plus 4x 
And last but not least, negative one minus one is negative two. It's the predecessor of negative one. And this is equal to zero. I mean, this right here is the first way to factor our polynomial. But as mentioned before, we got a second way at our hands. Namely, we can also write it as basically the conjugate of this thing. Namely, x squared minus one squared. For this, we are not going to take this positive branch right here. We are going to take a look at the negative branch. Then what is the left is plus two x squared. And then all the other bunch, okay? That's still left. Nothing changes here. Okay, this is what we got. Now, next up, I want you guys to notice that we got a factor of two. It really doesn't matter on which part we factor it. We got a factor of two here, definitely. Let us factor it out real quick, giving us overall that on the one end we got x squared plus one, whole thing squared. And then mm, why not factor the negative two, for example, here? Because we got negative two here in front of the x squared and negative two here. Maybe this makes our life a bit easier. So negative two, and then we got x squared. Factoring out negative two on four x gives us negative two x, and then plus one is equal to zero. Or on the other hand, we also got, okay, this first part is going to stay how this, x squared minus one squared and now factoring out the two here okay really doesn't matter plus two we we are still left with x squared and then plus two x and then we are going to get negative one is equal to zero and now we are probably already noticing that one way of factoring this polynomial is bullshit we don't want that this really doesn't fit our needs in any way namely if you take a look at what we got here in parentheses. I mean, this is already the binomial theorem. This is what we got up here just with x instead of x squared. That's a good binomial theorem. We can make use of that. We can factor this into some kind of square. But if we take a look at this kind of factoring, what we got here is x squared plus 2x minus 1. Even if we were to factor out a negative 1, we're going to get negative x squared. This sounds kind of complex. I don't know if this uh, is factorable nicely. I don't know, but I don't think so. I wouldn't go with this way. I would definitely go with this one just because we're going to get a square out here. And then we got a square minus some kind of square, difference of two squares, which is good to factor. So yeah, we should definitely go with this one right here. So let's scratch this idea and let's go with this one. Now, as mentioned before, what we got right here is just a binomial theorem. Namely, let us rewrite what we got right here as being, okay, this is easy. It's just what we got up here, just with an x instead of an x squared. Namely, this is going to give us x and then negative. We got negative one right here and then squared. Now, like mentioned a second ago, we basically got a difference of two squares here. Only thing missing to get ourselves a complete difference of two squares is a square right here. This is two multiplied with a square. Now, how can we turn our two into a square? Obviously, by using the same trick we use on the plus transforms all the time in algebraic manipulations. Namely, we're going to say that two is nothing other than the square root of two, but in squared. And the cool thing about this little transformation, I would say, is that we can make use of the well-known um, exponentiation property that a squared times b squared is going to be a times b and the whole thing squared. Meaning overall, what do we got after doing a tiny little bit of work, not too much, we are going to receive that x squared plus one whole thing squared um, minus, and now big parentheses, now we are going to get square root of two times what we got right here in parentheses, so square root of two times x minus the square root of two um, all of the squared is equal to zero. And now, et voila, we got the difference of two squares. And difference of two squares is cool because this is going to allow us to factor this out into the multiplication of two factors. And if we got two factors multiplied together being equal to zero, I mean, this is our linear combination of our little polynomial that we got right here. But this also implies that one of the parts must be equal to zero. And well, we are going to end up with something x squared and solving quadratic equations is really easy using a quadratic formula. So pretty good factorization. I really like this approach. Now, using the difference of two squares formula, we are going to end up with, okay, our first part is going to be x squared plus one. Now we are going to get negative everything we got in here. So minus the square root of two times x and negative and negative is going to be positive. So plus square root of two and all of this multiplied with the basically the same thing, just to conjugate right here, with a positive instead of a negative. Meaning we are going to get x squared plus one, and then positive square root of two 
times x and negative square root of 2. And all of this is equal to 0. Oh, this is good. As mentioned before, we got a multiplication of two things equal to 0. So either this one right here is 0 or this one right here is 0. Allowing us to set both of them equal to 0 respectively and then just use the quadratic formula. Let us um, clean this up a tiny little bit more because um, yeah, those coefficients are a bit scrambled up right now in our parentheses. But after um, sorting for everything it becomes a bit more clear what our coefficients for the quadratic formula must be. So this right here is equivalent to saying we got 0 being equal to. So the first factor is going to be x squared. Then we are going to get, okay, now negative square root of 2 times x and then positive square root of 2, positive 1. So negative square root of 2 times x and then plus, let's put it like this, square root of 2 and then positive 1. And all of this multiplied with, I mean, we got the same thing right here, x squared. Now, on this part, we are going to get positive square root of 2 times x. And then let us factor out the negative 1 right here, okay, giving us negative parentheses square root of 2 minus 1. Reasons for that are pretty apparent because you are going to get a negative sign in, in front of this um, coefficient in your quadratic formula. So it might. It does make a bit of sense to factor out the negative one. So what we are going to get is now a positive square root of 2 times x and a negative um, square root of 2 minus 1. And well, now we are going to make use of the quadratic formula. Let us start off with this part, meaning the first two solutions to our problem are going to be, I mean, we are going to get negative, negative square root of 2 over 2, so just, neg uh, just positive square root of 2 over 2, plus or minus the square root of. Now we are going to get this part that we got right here squared. This is going to give us 2 over 4, which is going to be the same thing as 1 half. So this right here is 1 half. And now we are going to get negative everything that we got in here. Negative square root of 2 and then minus 1. This right here is the first set of solutions, two solutions to our problem. Now we can do a bit better than that because um, negative 1 plus 1 half is going to give us negative 1 half overall. And if we were to factor out the negative, we are going to get square root of negative 1 times 1 half plus square root of 2. If one of the parts inside of our square root is positive, then we can um, break it up into the square root of negative 1 plus minus the square root of negative 1. Kind of important to get i out on the other side by definition times the square root of 1 half plus square root of 2. Meaning the first two solutions are going to be, we can expand this right here by square root of 2 over square root of 2, giving us 1 over square root of 2 and then plus or minus our imaginary unit i times the square root of square root of 2 plus 1 half. So definitely two complex solutions that we got right here at hand. Now what about the solutions to this second parentheses that we got right here? Now x, 3 and 4 are going to be. Here we are going to get a negative sign in front because here's a positive sign in front of this coefficient. So negative square root of 2 over 2. Once again, we are going to square what we got right here, giving us 2 over 4 yet again, which is nothing other than 1 half. Now we are going to get negative, negative, so this cancelling out, positive, what we got right here in parentheses, so square root of 2 minus 1. And yet again, negative 1 plus 1 half is going to give us negative 1 half. Meaning the second set of solutions that we got, the next two solutions and also the last ones at that are going to be negative 1 over square root of 2, same thing that we got right here. But this time they are purely real solutions, namely square root or square root of 2 minus 1 half. And those are our solutions and I hope you did like what you saw today. And I think this way of um, breaking up the polynomial into linear factors is very interesting and kind of in ingenious. It's, it's just cool how you can get the difference of two squares out on the other side. And if you are interested in algebra, complex numbers, polynomials, solving polynomials in general, then I invite you to try today's sponsor Bray and to be kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Now brilliant, just like those two roots right here, are the real thing. They provide you with some of the best interactive online learning content that you can find out there on the internet. And they have a very high reputation, in my opinion, out there in the scientific community. Because there's nearly no better place to learn new STEM related things than over on brilliant. If you decide to learn something new today, be it algebra, 
physics, chemistry, computer sciences, then you should definitely check out Brilliant. Because if you are interested in just getting the hang of new topics using highly interactive visuals, just overall good explanations that have been created by experts in their field, then it's definitely the right choice for you to go check it out using the link at the top of the description, preent.org slash flamblemaths. With their nearly 70 interactive courses in all topic STEM, as mentioned before, they make it a rather easy feat to learn something new on your own. In most cases, it's kind of hard to learn something new completely on your own without a lecturer, professor, teacher, etc. But Preant is kind of your teacher. And it's not easy in the sense that you are going to go over there, read into something and hey, you know about the topic now. No, it's easy in the sense that they are going to guide you through a lot of very, very well thought out exercises that have been created by experts. And those exercises start off rather easy but get gradually harder over time, giving you a better understanding of the topic and giving you the chance to apply it to other parts of STEM. For example, polynomials also find their uses in physics and chemistry and they are basically everywhere. Biology, solving systems of equations. And yeah, Brian does that. Brian gives you a better understanding of these topics and even further topics that you can read into. So as mentioned before, Check it out, link at the top of the description with it. You're going to get free access to a big portion of print already. But more importantly, the first 200 people to actually make use of the link get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a really great deal considering the amount of content that you are going to get for the pretty small buck. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. I think that's watching. If you want to support the channel a bit more, go over to stemmerch.eu or Patreon or stemmerch.com or my personal Teespring shop, etc. etc. And up until the next video, I wish you guys a flammable day and please stay safe. Ciao! Yeah.